Last week, our news partners at Willamette Week broke the story that Fagan was working as a consultant for one of her top donors. Willamette Week has also been taking an in-depth look into the cannabis company and its owners at the center of the controversy, first publishing a story back in March. Joining us to talk about that story, the reporter at the forefront of the investigation, Sophie Peel. Sophie, really phenomenal reporting. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here, Sophie. Before we get to the Secretary of State, let's talk more about your reporting into Lamoto. How did that all come about? Um, well, I first talked to two sources of mine, um, and they had some information uh, about Lamoda and maybe where I should look. Um, so I started the reporting process on that, and what we found during the months-long investigation is that they have been issued over $7 million in state and federal uh, tax liens for unpaid marijuana taxes, amongst other taxes, including employment taxes, transit taxes, pretty much running the whole gamut of taxes that you're supposed to pay to the state and to the feds. Um, we also learned that they've been sued in Oregon circuit courts 30 times over the past five or six years. Many of those complaints allege non-payment of bills, whether it was from a handyman that did a lot of work on their dispensaries across the state, whether it was from the, the tax company that they hired to do their taxes in 2021, or whether it was from other cannabis vendors who had sold them product. You laid out so many problems and, and concerns with that couple. Did you ever make contact with them? What did they have to say? Um, we tried. We have consistently reached out to them, you know, since our March 20, well, before our March 29th cover story and then a, a, for subsequent stories as well. Um, you know, the second week into our reporting, we got an email from a lawyer, Amy Margolis, who decided to represent them, who basically said, your questions are, you know, potentially endangering my clients, and if you continue to do so, we will take immediate legal action. That's all we've heard from them. We have published probably 20 stories since about the couple, and we haven't heard a peep. What led you to look more closely at the Secretary of State, Shmia Fagan? Well, during our reporting process, we had learned that, you know, Rosa Cazares and Aaron Mitchell, who were the owners of Lamoda, they had somewhat of a relationship with Shamia. Um, you know, they had thrown her a couple different fundraisers at a Northwest Hills mansion that they were renting. They had given her over $45,000 to her campaign for Secretary of State. We knew that they hung out outside of politics to some extent. That's really all we knew. So what we did do prior to our, you know, our, our March 29th story is we asked Asked, we, you know, using public records law, we asked for the working audit papers of the Oregon Liquor and Cannabis Commission, which, as many people know, the audits division is overseen by the Secretary of State, so Secretary Fagan. So we'd asked for those working papers, and we just got them last week, which is sort of when we started to see what was happening. The other thing that really led to, you know, last week's revelation that she was working for a co as a contractor for this company is we received a tip from, I, I don't know who this person is, um, we re received a tip on Wednesday morning and then we acted on that tip and asked questions of her office one more question for you Fagan had a press conference yesterday she cut it short what questions do you still have for her do you feel like she answered everything yesterday I don't know and I think a lot of reporters feel you know feel the same um, there were a lot of unanswered questions I think we still don't really understand the extent of their relationship and in the contract itself and she you know secretary Fagan declined to sh share that contract publicly for five days which I really think was um, you know may have been the nail in the coffin for you know her term as Secretary of State um, especially as you know she's supposed to bas basically be the the chief person in Oregon for transparency and basically truthfulness um, and so she only you know she only shared that contract yesterday morning and what that contract showed is that she made ten thousand dollars a month um, and then thirty thousand dollars for any additional cannabis licenses that she helped Lamoda obtain in states outside outside of Oregon and New Mexico. That being said, the, the language of the contract itself was quite, you know, it was very vague. So there may be more that we don't know. Um, we don't know that yet. And I also think maybe the abruptness of her resignation would suggest that maybe there's more out there. Again, we don't know that, but I think people are, um, are thinking there might be more to come. Sophie, thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks, thanks for Thanks for stopping me. by and kudos again. Really exceptional reporting. Thank you. Appreciate it.